chapter 15, part 3. And in this part, we'll talk about our second, again, very simple search strategy that almost, I mean, all of you should know called DFS, depth first search, because you use it in P2 to generate the tree that you created, the decision tree that you created, you need to use DFS to 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 create the if else statements. But in, in in any case, we'll talk about this again formally using the search terminologies. So here, for the front here, instead of using a queue, we're going to use a stack. So a stack is basically a last in first out structure, and we're just going to move remove from the front and add also to the front. So let's use the same, maybe a bit boring maze to show you this stack. So we'll still start from this one here. And let's put the one here because we are putting stuff in the front. And the first thing is we, we are always dequeuing and, and enqueuing. And here we're going to call them pop and push because it's a more common terminology for stacks. So we're going to pop one, and we're going to push the successors. So suppose the successors are two and three, then let's put push two and three, or if you want to call it DQ and EQ, it's okay too. So next, we're going to pop two, and we're going to push the successor of two, which is four here. And now, this is where it's different for DFS and BFS. We're not going to pop three, we're going to pop four. So we're going to finish searching this branch, and then we're going to go back to three. So if we pop four, we can push five in, and five is this one, and then we can pop five, no successor. So now, the front of the queue will be three. Actually, it's the front of the stack or the top of the stack, whatever. And then we pop this, and then we push six in, and then pop six, push seven, pop seven, push eight. So it's the same thing again. And if you want the tree, then it is one and two and three. But instead of expanding at the same level, we just continue to finish the two branch, which is five. Four, five, and then we're going to go back, basically backtrack and get to three, and then we're going to continue from three until we reach the goal. So that's the idea here. Uh, I will go through another numerical, at least two other numerical examples in the BBCU lecture. So in, in case it's not clear what what's happening with the larger tree, you will see more examples. Okay, so let's get back. Again, it's basically a summary about how to implement this. You all need to implement it for P5. So you can go back to these slides to, to check how you should implement these. We will go back to the th theory. Basically, we need to evaluate the performance. And it turns out DFS is not great. It's not complete because we can have branches that are infinite lengths. So we can basically search through one branch with infinitely infinitely deep, and then we never go back. So we may never find a solution or the goal. So it's not incomplete. So something that's incomplete is obviously not optimal. If we cannot even find a solution, then we will not find the optimal solution. And next, the hard part, and the time complexity. So it's not complete, so it must have some kind of good property. It turns out it's not time complexity, it's space complexity. But let's talk about time complexity first. So let's see, we have branches like this. And suppose the goal is here. It's kind of the worst case if the goal is at depth D and the whole thing is at depth D, large D. Then the third strategy is basically we go until the end, and then we backtrack and go back here, and then we backtrack again, and then we backtrack again, and then we backtrack again, and then we finally find the goal. 
So it seems we are going through the whole tree, and the whole tree is actually the large tree, not a small tree like in BFS. So the whole tree contains one plus sorry b squared b cubed until b to the power d. And we are not going to search this smaller part. So what is the smaller part is just b and b square until b to the power d min large d minus small d right so let me actually not confuse people by using the same color so this part of the tree is not searched so we need to subtract that subtract b square b cubed until at somewhere in the middle d minus d so you can see from the expression, some parts are cancelled out, so we are left with 1 plus these things. So it depends on wh whether you count the, the one at, at the top, so you can either include or not include this one. If you don't want to include it, it's okay. Uh, but in, in, in any case, if we only worry about the, the largest term, I mean the term with the largest degree, then it's a big O of b to the power large d, which is significantly larger than b to the power small d like in BFS. So the time complexity is worse. And the space complexity is actually better. So that's the reason why we talk about this, actually. So the space complexity means how many nodes or states we are keeping track in the frontier. So as you can see, we are at most keeping track of, say, one from each level or each depth and maybe one additional one. So it turns out if we have, say, more than two branches, then we are keeping track two from each level. So it's in general, it's b minus one in each level, and multiply by d, d is the total depth, and then we add one at the end. So that is big O of, I would say, b, b times d, uh, it depends on whether you consider d as a constant, but I, I will just write b times d, which is significantly smaller than what, what we had, b to the power small d for BFS. So seeing these, it seems if we keep the good property of uh, DFS and we want to change it to something like BFS, then it might be better. and Indeed, that's what we will do, and that's actually the most commonly used algorithm that we use in search problems in AI. I mean, uninformed search problems in AI is called Iterative Deepening Search, so IDS. So the idea is very simple. It's just DFS with depth restriction of 1. So we basically search the top at, at and we stop there using DFS. And then we search the next level, and we stop at depth 2. And then we search again, backtrack, and we search again, like backtrack, but we stop at depth 3. And we would stop until we hit the depth of the goal. So the natural question is, why are we wasting time doing all of these when I can just do like DFS once at depth D? The answer is we don't know what D is at the beginning. If we know where the, the go is, then we know the solution already. Here, we don't know, so we don't know what D is. So we need to basically try different values of D and hopefully we can find the smallest one. So you can probably see that we will find the optimal solution here. But in, in any case, we don't know D, that's why we're trying all of these. And it turns out that the work done combining all of these previous ones is kind of the same as just doing the last level. So it's, I guess it, it, it is technically a waste of expanding, repeatedly expanding the same things. Here, notice that we're repeatedly expanding the same things, but it turns out computationally, it's not a lot of work to to waste compared to just doing the next level. So we, we, we do want to waste like all of these work and then ju 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 just try different depths and find the smallest one. So that's the idea behind IDS. And um, 
Instead of using the maze, I think it doesn't make any sense. I will just draw a diagram, and then hopefully you can see what's happening. So suppose we have a large tree. Now I'm drawing, drawing triangles. And we have some small d here with the goal here. Then what DFS is doing is I search the first branch, second branch, third branch, and so on. So I search everything until finally we hit this one. And what IDS is doing, so IDS, is I limit depths at 1, I search all of them. Limit the depths at 2, I search all of them. Limit the depths at 3, I search all of them again. So there are some repeated work. And here, I search all of them. And then we reach the goal. So the amount that we saved is these. So this search needs to be done in DFS, but they are saved if we use IDS. So it's lots and lots of work because the, the number of states here are increasing exponentially. So there are lots of work done if we, as we get deeper. But here we are wasting this work, so this, this, and then this. But it's okay. There are smaller trees, so that's why where, where that, that's why compared to DFS, IDS, it's saving work and making the algorithm complete and optimal. While we are using DFS to save the space, so let's actually talk about this. Again, that's just a summary, and the performance, as I said, is complete, is optimal, and the more important thing is that. It saves time, and the space is the same as DFS. So let's talk about the time. So when we limit depths, so limit depths at one, we are going to search B of them. So again, it depends on whether you want to add the one. So you can add some constant number of ones, but here, suppose we start from the second level, then we have b here, and if we limit depth to 2, then we have b plus b square, so it looks like a bfs, because we search, need to search through everything, and b plus b square plus b cubed, if we limit the depth to 3, and at the end, we need to limit the depth to d, and we have this. So we want to add all of these work up, and it's adding these up. There are d of the b's, so d times b. So as I said again, you can have one times one times one plus d or something at the beginning, but it doesn't matter. And then we have b squared, and there are d minus one of them because they start at depths two. And it continues, and here we get to at the end just one times speed to the power d. And we have here it's two times speed to the power d minus one. So let's see what is this. So if b is say larger than two, then this thing is kind of less than b to the power d. Maybe we should add an equal. And here it's strictly less than b to the power d. Because if b is larger than 2, then 3 is less than 4, so, so that's smaller. And, and, and then as we go further, it becomes smaller and smaller. So all of them are kind of small compared to this. So it turns out it's just big O of b to the power d. So remember, this is just bfs. So we save a lot of time. And here, this is just DFS, and the depth limit is D, because we never search anything further than D, so it's actually less than DFS space complexity, so it's the same thing. And as I said, if you want to add a 1 here, you can. Okay, so that's actually all I want to talk about IDS, and... 
uh, in the BBCU lecture, we will actually go through mo more examples, including the examples with tree star, I mean, search tree star, not trees. They are graphs, so we have recombining states and stuff, so we'll talk about those as some examples, but the examples are very intuitive, so you should be able to figure them out very naturally if some of the nodes recombine. So I will not talk about the theory here. And the thing that I, will, I do want to talk about is something called the configuration space. So basically the idea here is we want to figure out how to control a robotic arm so that it can pick up something. And let's look at a demo. Uh, robotic arm, let's try this one. So here we have four pieces of arms and we can ro rotate each one. So the, the hand is basically here and we can rotate this part as well. Note that we're just changing the angle here in the previous joint. And similarly, we can do something like this. So suppose we start at a position here and we move, want to move the arm to somewhere, say, here. Then it's kind of hard to figure out which one sh I should rotate to make it go there because it must be a combination of the, the, these angles that, that work. So it may take a long time for me to figure, figure this out if I just search this way. Uh, so, so the idea here is basically I start from here and I need to go through all the possible next steps. So basically changing the degree by say one by a sm smallest unit we can do. And then we can try to change this and change this. But it turns out it's hard to find where the next step is. So we're going to conduct the search in another space called configuration space. And the configuration space is basically a four-dimensional space that the, the axes are just the angles of, so these four angles that are controlling the arms. So let me actually do one simple example with only two pieces of the arms so that it's easier to see what the configuration space looks like. So the original space looks like this. We have one piece and another piece. Suppose we want to move from the initial state to somewhere, say, here, which is kind of hard, the go state. We cannot just rotate this piece. We need a combination of these two. So perhaps we can get like something like this. But in any case, we want to describe each state by the angle of these these pieces of arms. And let's say this is theta and this is gamma. Then we convert it to another space. Let's see. Let's, let's do it this way. And we have a theta and we have a gamma. So what we'll do here is we will plot the initial state here, which is that particular theta, which is kind of a small theta and a large gamma. So that's our initial state. And here, as I said, we don't know where it moves to. So if we change gamma by one unit, we're going to move here and here. But if we change theta, we're going to move somewhere like here and here. So it's not a regular grid. We do, we do not know how to search on a space like this because it's hard to generate these successors. So what we'll do instead is we'll just generate the successors here. So these four are the, f are the four successors. And we can search here in this configuration space on a regular grid. And for each one of these, we can go back and use some geometry to actually compute what these four are corresponding to. So basically, these four original points. So then what we'll do next is we check whether each of these four are the goal state. And so sometimes we have the problem of there are some, some obstacles. So for example, your arm cannot touch something like that. And then we can also actually evaluate at these four points, are, are we violating the obstacle constraints? So for example, if we move there, the arm would behave like something like this, which hits the obstacle, then that would not be a feasible state. 
then we will, we will just get rid of that. And then the next step, for example, if we are using BFS, then we are expanding all of them like that. And we have basically all of these states, and each state will correspond to one, one position on the original space, and we can also check which ones are feasible. So for example, this one is not feasible, so we'll not continue searching here. Suppose these are all not feasible, so we can stop searching at, at those states. And we can basically just continue like this and keep searching this way. If we are using DFS, then we're going to search along a path. So suppose at some point here, that point actually mapped to exactly the goal state, so suppose now we we can't touch this obstacle, so maybe it's something like this. Mm, it's a bad drawing, but in, in, in any case, so suppose one of the state correspond to the goal state, then we can stop there. So again, the basic idea here is we are going to convert the space into a space that's easier to generate the successors, and then we can go back and figure out and basically check whether we reached the goal or whether we violated some constraints. And we can search search it that way. So that that's the idea behind how to control ro robotic arms to do specific things. Okay. So the last thing is in the next lecture we'll talk about informed search. So here what we have done is called uninformed search because we have no additional information except for the possible successors. So basically, we know nothing about the space. We can just search through the whole space, and, and hopefully we can find a goal. Informed search, on the other hand, means we know some information about these states. So in particular, which of these non-goal states are closer to the goal state, which means they are, they are better. We should search those first. And that obviously will make search a lot faster because we know which, which states are better and closer to the goal state, we can do search those first and most likely we'll reach the goal very early instead of searching through all possible ones. So that's all for this lecture and we'll continue in the next lecture.